Hello and welcome everyone, I'm the Kestrel and today I'm here to help you operate the Foxtrot 9 test bed fission reactor in QSO. Now this is a new addition to the game as of July 2022, so there's probably not any tutorials out on how to operate it yet, but from various sources, mostly by developers who I talked to about this, um, I will be teaching you all how to operate this device. So first thing you want to do is make sure that, well, everything is operating. So firstly, turn on the converter pistons. Uh, you need to turn those on. Don't mess with these. So the, syns mm, the synchroscope is going to be spinning, don't worry about that. Uh, these enunciators are going to be doing that. Um, so what you probably want to want is global rod selection, which automatically selects all of the rods. So at this point, see three enunciators, low thermal power, Please you know, Thanks. low, low, yeah. Uh, then you have thermal loop active, that's basically always on, and a low alternator voltage. We don't want either of these on, so what we're going to want, we're going to want to turn it off. But right now we want to turn the control rod speed to two times and continuous CR transit to on. And flick it to up, keep up. Keep a close eye on that neutron rate. Once it reaches the yellow, turn down this for a second, and then wait. Then it will go back down. And now it's seventy percent. We need the reactor temperature close to that seven fifty mark, and we need to also make sure that pressure isn't too high, or else we're gonna have some issues. So this is still not even close to good. This needs to be about 3,500 kilowatts to work properly. So, I'm going to turn it back up. Keep a close eye on that neutron rate again. It's very important. Keep a close eye on the pressure too, that's also important. So about now, we want to turn it back down. And then we're at 40%. The reactor temperature is rising. Looking, looks good. Uh, well, we need pressure to be a bit further down. It's a bit worrying that pressure is so high. So, this is still just spinning, which is not good. The production is going up, which is good. That's what we want. And the issue is with pressure that pressure is a bit too high. It's at 2185 psi, which is, well actually that's different than what this says. That's probably somewhere closer to like 22, I don't know, maybe it is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which of those dials, or which of those little lines is supposed to be 2250, but anyways, it's at 2184. It's dropping though, which is good. The average temperature is also dropping though, which is a bad thing. We're going to want to turn this up again. Keep a close eye on the neutron rate and the pressure rate. Sometimes that pressure just kind of sneaks up on you when you least expect it. And then turn this back to that. At this point we probably wanted more detailed, so we're going to turn on CR or deep turn off CR trend and control rod speed. Or turn control rod speed to one time. And now they're at 10% when the green, and this is going pretty well. The kilowatts are about where we want them, around 3,500, which is exactly what we want. Temperature is basically perfect. But pressure, the pressure is being a little bit worrying. It's at 3,300, which is obviously not what we want. I uh, missed the synchronoscope. Uh, so we might want to actually bring this down actually. So we're going to... I'm going to try and avoid scram because that's kind of a pain to recover. So Uh, gravity drop, that's good. Uh, it's in scram, which is 
you know, we don't really want it in spam, that's bad. We got a bunch of things on, but what we really need to not happen is have we actual rupture. That is the worst thing that can happen. We do not want a reactor rupture. So, just talk to this person, they can tell us a bit, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically just a little bit, but it's not a comprehensive guide. So we're still getting on the alarm. Not really sure what this alarm is for, since it's pretty much stable, but so the scram, it's, uh, you know, yeah, pressure is still dropping, temperature is still dropping, low thermal power, yeah, we'll basically reset the reactor back to, and we can just scram reset to turn off. Scram. We can turn off all of these release valves, and that means we're basically just back where we started. Yeah, turn this on. I'm gonna bring this up to maybe about 40%. That's what I'm gonna bring it down to up to, because that's about what we wanted at. Maybe 40, 45, maybe 50 immediately giving us problems with oh pressure so we want to bring this down oh it, it's crammed again which is you know okay uh, okay cannot disengage scram because the pressure is too high and the difficulty really is with the pressure so we're just gonna let it drop like all the way and, you know, this machine is definitely difficult to operate. It's extremely hard to get it to work, like, completely. You know, I'd say this is significantly harder to operate than the BMR, which is actually pretty straightforward once you know what you're doing. This is still difficult even once you know what you're doing. The pressure is still going up actually, which is worrying me a bit. It shouldn't be doing that. I want pressure to go down. So, it's kind of. Reset. Not pressure down as far down as possible, but it's not actually gonna really let us go further down, unfortunately. Uh, maybe if we turn on, oh, at least valves are on, so we're gonna turn those off. And it's all, you know basically down not really sure what this is saying but I'm gonna bring these up now I'm gonna be a little more careful a little slower this time we gotta keep our eye on the neutral blade um, keep our eye on everything really we're seeing control rods in transit, yep. Low alternator voltage, we don't want that. And now we're seeing an issue with the neutron rate, so we're going to stop raising the control rods, let that fall, and bring it back up. And uh, keep our eye on the pressure, starting to enter what could be considered hazardous levels. And now this, this is very much still not going great. This is red. It's a light red, which is not good. We don't want it to be that color. So, 
so we also the temperature is dropping too pretty difficult to get the temperature in the right spot without having the pressure be too high but we can we can definitely try so keep an eye on the neutron weight bring it back and we're good this is basically as good as we're gonna get get right onto the sink off the scope and this is probably going to be our best shot as long as it doesn't scram if it scrams that's really bad our kilowatts are pretty much perfect and it's saying we are not good and I'm not quite sure why I'm gonna actually gonna bring stuff down slightly just a little bit not too much maybe to 35 and maybe that's gonna fix it. The pressure is still going up, which is worrying me a bit. I'm gonna try again. Still saying it is very difficult. It's all looking good. Alright. It's all creating 3750. Well, looks fine. It all looks basically perfect. You know, the pressure looks a little bit worrying. But it's still telling us that the converters must be spinning. So let's see if this person has something to say about it. How do I operate Foxtrot? How. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it does not tell us anything here. Safety mechanism. Okay, yeah, it doesn't doesn't tell us much of what we want. And it's gonna scram, isn't it? Is it? It looks good to me. This is extremely difficult to get synced. Fuel cell capacity yeah, low. I think we need to Fuel actually put it closer to that 40, 45. I'm actually gonna turn that off. I think 42.5 might be like perfect. Temperature is going up. Like that's a problem. So we're at 45 now. I do not want Scram to activate, um, so we're gonna put it at 50, see if that makes a difference. It is still going up, so I'm gonna turn on CR Transit, even this, so we're gonna get it to like 60, yeah that's good, 62.5, or 65. That looks like it's probably gonna give us, that's gonna give us a decrease in temperature. Giving us high, yeah, high system pressure, which is a problem. It's no longer in high system pressure. Looks like we might actually have a good opportunity. And stuff's shut down. I'm assuming because the DMR just had a combustion stall. It's unfortunate. But if we see, no, it's still not operating. We can look. Converter is probably too low, so I'm actually going to bring it up slightly. Maybe to like 60. Maybe 60 might work. It is, it is a process, that's for sure. We look, temperatures are about 820, pressure isn't too high, and it's it's telling us 60 hertz, but it's 
pretty much impossible to like there's no gauge of what those hooks there's no there is no meter of hooks anywhere if you look everywhere around like if you look at the overview there's nothing about hooks so it is extremely difficult to get this working but so I think syncing it is Sinking it is very difficult, and while I haven't been able to achieve it here, the main tip is just keep it around the 35. And there we go, actually. I did. I got it basically perfect by just maintaining. I had uh, control rods at 60%, so I did actually get it. Uh, these are actually a bit lower, so I might have gotten incorrect figures. Uh, maybe keep it closer to 30 or 3,000 kilowatts uh, production and temperature around 700 or 675 and it synced so that gave me the quest thing of nuclear nuclear something right oh yep yeah, I've done that four plenty of times uh, nuclear physicist I just got that so I don't know why it's saying this is available because it isn't as you saw it is but yep the test fission uh, sorry test bed fission reactor is now active which is very happy I uh, managed to manage to sync the grids is a very difficult task. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this. Pretty proud. Let's get another one in case that one was while this, the lights went on. And yep, that is basically how to operate the Foxtrot 9 test bed fission reactor in QSO. Thank you all for watching.